So yeah, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, well, it's my pleasure to well to present our collaborative research center, Digital Twin of the Road, and also thank you for organizing this amazing workshop here. And I will give my uh, presentation together with my coworker, David Krampen. He is currently for research stay here at uh, UNSW at CISIS Group. And very, uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity to present our work. Okay, so uh, let's start with an overview about this collaborative research center. This is uh, really a large research project. It's uh, two, two universities are involved. It's uh, TU Dresden in Germany and our university, uh, WTH Aachen. And a collaborative research center is um, a kind of framework, you can say, or an umbrella, because in this uh, collaborative research center, we have 20 sub-projects dealing with different aspects concerning digital twins of roads, like, like new materials, new sensors, and also uh, digital models. And as you can see, we started roughly two years ago. So we are in the half of the first, uh, of the first phase of this project. Uh, and the speaker is Michael Kaliski, he's a colleague from Theo Dresden, and I am one of the vice speakers. Okay, if you look on these uh, icons in the middle, these are the different, or the, the multiple uh, uh, sub-projects. I will go a little bit more in detail in a minute. Okay, so this is the agenda of my of our talk. Uh, I will start, so we split it up in two parts. The first part, um, I will give and give an intro introduction to our collaborative research center. So what is the goal? Uh, what is the concept of research, collaboration, and so on? And then the second part is given by David, and he gives uh, more insights in our sub-project, what is about a geometric semantic model of the road. Okay, so let's start. And I would like to start with a Chinese saying. <laughs> uh, it is uh, one generation builds the road to which the next travels. And if you look on the pictures, then this is absolutely true. Because on the left hand side, you can see a picture of a highway. I guess it's about 80 to 90 years ago in Germany. And in the middle, this is a picture of a highway today. And if you compare these two pictures, and then again, if you if you compare these two pictures, then um, well, you can see the the road from today looks quite similar than the road from eighty year eighty to ninety years ago. Even the vehicles changed, the technology changed, and also the function of the road is the same. The, the function of a road is mainly to carry the load of the vehicles. That's all, and that's why we ask the question: How will future roads look like, especially considering all the challenges uh, we, have, we will have in future. And to, to emphasize this, I will give you some numbers from Germany. Uh, these are numbers from the Federal Ministry of Transport. And what is shown here is the performance of the road, uh, road transport for, for the transport of goods or freight transport. And what you can clearly see is that the roads are the main mode for the transport of goods and also for for the private sector of private uh, uh, private transport is almost the same and that shows that uh, roads are very important at least for germany however um on the other side we have a lot of problems with our roads there are a lot of challenges what is shown here so in germany we have a really high uh, traffic volume and it's still increasing also the loads increase and that leads to, to damages, more and more damages, lack of durability. Um, there's also a challenge of resource and energy efficiency. And as mentioned before, one question is, uh, are roads really, or the function of roads really only for carrying the load of the vehicles? And this is, um, this is really interesting if you think about future challenges, for example, autonomous driving. And so the question is, are our roads ready for the current as well as the future challenges? And for us, the answer is no, they are not. So then the question is, what, what can we do? And our idea is uh, to digitalize the, the road system. But digitalization is a, is a broad field. 
So the question is, how do we digitalize the road? And um, well, the basic idea of our, our research is then to use the concept of a digital twin. And we, we follow very closely the, the original definition of a digital twin from, from production engineering. That means, first of all, a digital twin is an exact copy of a real world asset, in our case, the road. And this is done by combining different digital models, data, and algorithms in our digital twin on a, on a, in a virtual world. And the second key feature of a digital twin is a close coupling of both representations, the real asset as well as the virtual one, uh, in order to exchange data and knowledge. Okay, in pictures, this means, okay, so we have the, uh, the real world asset, so the road system. <clears throat> First of all, we create this virtual system as an exact copy, and then we couple this both. So this is a digital twin. So it sounds very easy, but when you think about what do we have to do to, to, to reach this goal, then you will find out that we need a lot of things that are not exist today. For example, um, we need sensors in the pavement, for example, for collecting data, or we use maybe sensors from the vehicles, um, also sustainable and sensitive materials um, would, would help to, to collect data from the, from the roads. Then on the right hand side, we need a lot of different models, we need uh, physical models, for example, for simulating um, structural mechanical issues. Um, then we need, of course, geometrical models, sensor models, or in general data driven models that do not exist today. And the goal is to, to do data uh, exploration. So for uh, data driven analysis or for simulations, then of course we need also components um, for, for, for simulations. And from these findings, uh, we get knowledge for optimize um, the operation of the infrastructure. This is the idea. And in between, we need also something else. Uh, we need a technology for transferring the data from the road, from the real asset to the virtual one. For example, uh, by these roadside units or by, by wireless transmission technologies, for example. Okay, and these are the main goals of our CRC. Uh, in Germany, CRC is uh, SFB, TRR, but this is the same. Uh, so the main goals for us is to, to develop novel methods, uh, being able to setting up these digital twins, um, especially for sustainable operation and maintenance. And this is really important for Germany at least, because it's, it's, it's not about uh, constructing or building new roads, rather than um, improves the operation and maintain maintenance of the existing ones. Okay, so which uh, capabilities such a digital twin has? Well, if we have such a digital twin, we, we can uh, collect very precisely traffic data in real time. This helps us also for getting information about location of, uh, of critical pavement conditions or damages, so we can locate these damages. Um, simulations will help us to more precisely predict the pavement state. Uh, this can, can help for optimize the, the pavement loading by control the traffic, for example. Um, and as already mentioned, we can optimize the, the maintenance intervals in this case for uh, sustainable um, operation of the road infrastructure. These are some examples. Okay, so our research center has, a, I would say, many, many goals. However, we are a little bit also a little bit focused because the focus of our research is the blue box you can see here. So it's the structural part of the road. It's not about autonomous driving. It's not about energy production or something like that. It's only the structural parts. That means uh, how to integrate sensors in the pavement, uh, what can be new materials, uh, how to simulate this vehicle tire pavement interaction and so on. Okay, now the question is how, uh, how we will proceed to reach this goal. And uh, well, when we, when we thought about it, 
um, we we found this, this maturity levels of digital twins. Maybe we, if, if you deal with digital twins, you know these maturity levels. There are many of them. And we use a, a three-stage uh, maturity level model. And that means in the first stage, if you want to set up a digital twin, you need to create these digital models. So we have the, the real um, the real asset in the physical world. And first of all, you need these digital models for copying this real asset. But however, the data flow between the real asset and the, and the virtual one is still manually. So there's no automatic data flow. Then in the second level, um, we automate the data flow from the real system to the virtual one. Um, and this is then called the digital shadow. And then in the last step, um, we will also try to automate the data transfer from the virtual system to the real world. And this is then the digital twin. And what we try is to, to implement this maturity level model also for our CRC, um, because as I told you, we are currently in the first phase. And if we perform very well, we can have uh, in maximum three phases each four years. And that means in the first phase where we are now, uh, we try to build up these sub models and sub elements uh, like shown here on, on the left side. After this four years, we will apply for the next three, four years. And um, then it's to, to integrate all the sub models mm -hmm. and also to automate the data flow from the, from the real world to the virtual world. So that means to set up this digital shadow. And then in the last phase, another four years, uh, the idea is to explore this digital twin um, for operation of future road systems. And this is, okay, this is many theoretical world uh, work. However, um, it is flanked also by some uh, experimental work, for example, on test tracks, or then in the third phase, it is also intended to, to, to do some experiments on real uh, roads. Okay, so um, I come to the end of my part, uh, but I would like to to go a little bit more in detail what we do exactly in these different sub-projects. Um, I go back. If you look on these pictures, you can see the three pillars with different colors. And these are the three different research fields we have in our uh, collaborative research center. And in the first research field, we call it the physical field. The sub -road, we have eight sub-projects in this uh, physical field. And all these projects, they deal with with, with questions about uh, physical issues. For example, how to do multi-physical simulations for the road systems, or what can be novel uh, high performance materials, as well as how to integrate sensors in the pavement, for example. So these are the eight sub-projects dealing with these uh, questions. In the second uh, research field, we call it the informational field, we have again eight sub projects, and they deal with, uh, for example, here's our uh, sub project located. It's about uh, digital models, models representing the geomet ge geometry and all the semantics of the um, of the road. It's also about how to um, how to analyze data streams from the sensors um, or acceleration of computation methods with respect to data uncertainty and Another very important topic is twinning. That means how to keep uh, the consistency between the real world and the, and, and the virtual world. That means if something changes in the real world, we have to, to get an information because then we have also update our virtual models. Okay, and last but not least, uh, in, the, in the third uh, research field, superordinate modules, uh, it's about legal aspects, data protection, and also sustainable, sustainability issues. And this is also very important because in, this, in such a digital road, we collect many, many data and roads are part of the critical infrastructure. So the question is, what can we do to protect this data? And what about legal aspects, for example? Okay, and this is all flanked also by some 
interdisciplinary working groups because many projects, for example, deal with sensors. So we have an interdisciplinary working group uh, discussing all questions about sensors. We have another uh, interdisciplinary working group about data management and so on. So we have the sub projects working for their own, but also this interdisciplinary working groups for collaboration within our collaborative research center. Okay, that's all from my side, the general introduction. And um, in the next part, or the next part of the presentation is given by David, and he will uh, present or introduce what we do in our sub-project. Thank you very much. So I will, as said, uh, briefly introduce our sub-project on uh, the adaptive geometric semantic multi-LOD information model of the infrastructure assets for the CPS cyber-physical system road. So first of all, for the motivation, why do we even need geometric semantic uh, models for digital twins? Um, first of all, we want to replicate a real world environment and um, therefore we obviously need georeferenced uh, semantic information as well as uh, geometric information. Um, and uh, depending on the different use cases, we want to um, develop within this digital twin system. We also uh, will have different granularities, both in semantic data as well as in geometric data. So we also have to recognize this and be able to deliver different um, models to the different stakeholders of use cases. Um, and uh, well, additionally, as already said, we have to keep the models we provide up to date. So we are talking about an as-is model, which is as opposed to an as plan model, for example. And um, the as-is model, yeah, as, as precisely as possible replicates uh, the physical environment. And um, how we are going to do this is uh, through reality capturing, uh, specifically with um, point clouds. Um, we have a UAV laser scanner, mobile laser scanner to scan the environment and therefore try to keep it up to date. Um, of course, coming from the point clouds to the digital representation or the di uh, digital model um, is time consuming and um, quite costly if it uh, is done, um, let's say manually. Um, so we also have to highly automate this workflow. Um, but of course, through these um, different steps, we have to go from point clouds to model. We will also introduce different imperfections, both on the semantic um, information as well as on the geometry. And um, those imperfections have to be taken into account to incorporate them into the outcomes of um, different um, use cases that are conducted with our models. So we also have to somehow try and uh, estimate the inherent um, uncertainties there. All right, that's an overview uh, of our different work packages and uh, they are structured into five different ones, um, starting with uh, work package one, which is a requirement analysis for geometric semantic models, um, spanning over the whole workflow and um, yeah, this is also a recent work we have conducted um, more than later, but uh, in work package two, which is also a major focus for us, is um, the uh, point cloud semantic segmentation, um, which will then help us in the further steps with the model generation um, in work package three. And um, in work package four, we will uh, develop the combined quality measure, which is um, accounting for the uncertainty estimation of our models uh, while we are going to finalize um, the delivery process to the different stakeholders in um, work package five. So as I said, recent uh, progress is um, work package one, where we developed a level of as is detail concept for the digital twin of the road. And as you can see, we have four terms uh, starting on the left side. It's not really visible here. Uh, unfortunately, but um, we have the level of geometric representation. And um, this one was uh, structured into three groups. So first group would be no representation if the specific objects are ir irrelevant for the use case. Um, we have a functional group with uh, 2D representations and a tactile group with uh, 3D representations. And accordingly, um, we have the term of a level of geometric uncertainty to quantify uh, the actual um, geometric accuracy or yeah, uncertainty in, inherent to the model, um, depending on the geometries. And on the other side, we have um, introduced the level of semantic granularity, 
uh, for which we developed um, an object class uh, hierarchy to um, be able to apply different um, granularities in our semantic data. But uh, I think it's getting more clear later. And of course, we also have the according level of uh, semantic uncertainty to quantify how certain we can be that uh, an actual object belongs to the class we assigned it to. Okay, going a little bit more into detail now, um, starting with the level of geometric representation. And here on the um, right side, you can see an example of um, the road space in the functional uh, representations. And we start in uh, level 0 0.1 with uh, only lines and points for different objects. Um, lines would, for example, be um, driving lanes, carriageways, and so on, or guardrails, for example. Um, and point objects would be rail, road furniture, like uh, road signs, um, shield gantries, and so on. Um, in level 0 0.2, we add the object boundaries. Um, and in 0 0.3, we have a planar representation, as you can see. So a top-down view um, in, um, in the bottom left. Uh, and in 0 0.4, we have a 2.5T isometric representation. Quick question. Quick yeah? Are you considering the road also kind of solid objects, including everything under the road? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, definitely planned. Um, but this will be a, um, part of the semantics, right? So um, I hope I, I hope it's gonna be um, more clear when I show uh, our visualization for the um, semantic granularity, uh, because we account for that um, on in this term, so to say. Um, it will it will be it'll be clear in just a second. So once again, um, the tactile group introducing it um, in the um, at the example of road furniture objects. Um, we start with a minimum boundary volume. Um, go on in level two with a convex hull. Um, in zero point uh, in in three, we uh, position the pre modeled assets. And in level four, um, we will use um, default meshes, which will be derived from the uh, point cloud segments to get as close as possible to the real shape of the objects. OK, now for the level of semantic granularity. And there we defined uh, five different functional units. Uh, so road space, road furniture, civil structures, traffic, and vegetation. And here on the right side, you can see um, what happens if we fix our um, level of uh, geometric representation, but vary um, the different uh, semantic granularities. And there you can see um, we stepwise introduce more and more different object classes that have to be present in the model. And in the uh, level four of the semantic granularity, um, we also inter, uh, introduce um, substructure, right? OK, here would be an example of this uh, class tax uh, taxonomy at the example of uh, the road space. And uh, yeah, we're just um, level by level differentiating the classes in, into more detailed object classes. Um, and well, so in the middle there, you can see um, substructure. So this shall account for the different um, layers of the road um, in the fourth level. OK, um, so coming to uh, our current work. So we are currently working on uh, the point cloud segmentation. And since it is a, um, a major task, we split it into two subtasks. First of all, the pre-segmentation and data enrichment to, yeah, let's say, prepare our data as best as possible for our fine segmentation. Um, and um, yeah, just as, as an overview, we use different data sources. The UAV data comes from our own scans and surveys. Um, we also use geospatial data and um, publicly available airborne laser scanning data. To first of all, um, perform the semantic segmentation and, of course, uh, with the end goal of generating um, the geometric semantic models. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, so basically, the models can be made at all levels. Um, if so, one, uh, one level of geometry be into the higher level form would be approached to top down, maybe from LOGR. Yeah, so so the, the way we will have to um, be able to generate all these different models would of course be being able to um, generate the most detailed model and then going backwards if 
certain details are not needed, right? So we try to be as efficient as possible in getting uh, models for specific use cases. And um, you can think of a very large scale use case, for example, traffic simulation within a city or over highways of several hundred kilometers. Uh, we wouldn't want uh, too much detail in those models because it's just getting too bulky and uh, super inefficient if we would provide such a model. So we simplify, right? So um, it also says uh, hierarchical fine segmentation. And that means um, we are going to um, develop potentially at least uh, several models to um, segment or semantically segment um, also the different semantic um, levels of the um, of our class taxonomy here, right? Um, so it really depends. We are currently working on what would be the best approach using several models in sequence or having one model um, segment all or the, the, the highest level of uh, semantic granularity and then just walking backwards, right? But this is still ongoing work. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Okay, perfect. So just briefly introducing um, the uh, workflow for the pre-segmentation. So first of all, we are using um, geospatial data to perform um, some course uh, pre-segmentation to remove all the areas which are out of interest. Um, then we apply some feature extraction scheme, um, spe uh, specifically with uh, the eigenvalue-based features, for example, um, and uh, afterwards select the most um, impactful features to feed them or to feed the whole and rich data set uh, at, in the end to a, uh, to a neural network model, um, where we are currently optimizing uh, sampling strategies and uh, using adaptive receptive fields to further improve the segmentation results. Um, the whole data set is complemented with a synthetic data generation approach where we um, can randomly generate models and virtually scan them. Um, but it's, um, I think we have a, um, an example um, later. So this is an example of uh, semantic segmentation, um, but uh, here based on the airborne laser scanning data. So this is really sparse data. Um, in the meantime, we have also captured uh, UIV uh, laser scans which are about a factor of 15 denser than those um, point clouds we have here. Um, so it is very likely that we will be able to um, extract more detailed object classes from, from those uh, data. So here's the example for the synthetic data gen uh, generation scheme, which uh, actually run runs inside of Unreal. Um, and uh, as you can see, we have generated uh, some road model, which is well, actually randomized, and we can then send a virtual laser scanner over this road to get um, labeled data, of course. This will only be used for pre-training uh, of the model, and uh, we will do some uh, transfer learning scheme uh, with uh, the real data to, um, yeah, to tweak uh, or fine-tune the end result model. Okay, um, future work will be, of course, uh, the model generation, developing the combined quality measure and um, yeah, finalizing the whole process and um, specific uh, challenges uh, or future tasks we have to uh, conduct will be specifying um, the requirements of different use cases uh, with our concept. Then of course, developing different uh, model generation um, algorithms, um, for example, based right now based on um, geometry extraction, like center lines, road widths, uh, side slopes and so on, collecting this and um, putting it into, uh, for example, some procedural uh, modeling uh, workflow. And then, of course, the uncertainty estimation uh, of geometry and uh, semantic classes, which at least for the semantic side, uh, we plan to um, perform um, model calibration, like um, with Bayesian networks, for example, to reduce the epistemic uncertainty of our semantic object classes. Um, and of course, validating all algorithms essentially because the workflow is, well, a, sequ a sequential workflow with uh, different steps uh, where we also introduce different um, sources of uncertainty, of course, into um, the end result. And this, of course, have to be somewhat um, validated in a feedback loop to, um, yeah, let's, let's say differentiate the different um, impacts. And lastly, we plan on supporting different uh, standard formats like IFC Road, IFC, uh, CTGML, and Open Drive 
to um, being able to deliver those uh, types of models to the stakeholders with um, different use cases who yeah, just might, may, uh, might be requiring these different standards. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it for me. Professor Blankenbach will do the summary. Thank yes, you very much. Just a short summary <clears throat> due to the time. Okay, so um, I hope we could show that uh, since our digital twin of the road is a really challenging project, but we believe that this can be really a big step towards more digitalization in the road uh, infrastructure, but it, it requires really much um, research. <clears throat> That's why we hope for 12 years of research. So because we have many, many issues uh, we're going to tackle. Um, what's very important is um, is a geospatial component. Uh, we think georeference geometric semantic models. That means geospatial models uh, can be a central basis. And this um, leads me to the last slide because Sissy asked for, uh, for a slide um, about uh, the challenges. Uh, first of all, I would like to emphasize again that geospatial data is really important for many digital twins, not only for roads, but also urban digital twins um, or, or whatever, let's say, for water infrastructure and so on, because this geospatial data is a basis for, for example, visualizations, as well as for spatial, uh, spatial simulations, for example. Um, and also for operation, for example, you need to georeference raw data, sensor readings, for example, as well as documents and so on, pictures. This is also very, very important task where geospatial data can help for the georeferencing. Um, and of course, um, georeference data or geospatial data gives the opportunity to get information about uh, dimension, shape, form of object. What can be, for example, see the border conditions for numerical models, very important. However, there are some challenges. Um, one, one challenge uh, David introduced this is how to automatically derive these geospatial models, especially in our case, this geometric semantic model from reality data, uh, from reality capturing data. Because currently, this is a manual driven task. So it takes a lot of time, it's very costly, and we need a higher automation for this task. Second, I call it geospatial twinning. That means for digital twins, it's it's really important uh, to keep the consistency between the real world and the virtual models. And uh, currently, our update frequency is not high enough for digital twins. So we have to uh, automatically detect if some, something changed in the real world, and then we have to update our models, idly also automatically. So this, I think, is really a huge challenge. And um, the before last point, ensuring interoperability. A digital twin, one feature of a digital twin is to combine different data, different models, simulations, and so on. But uh, each discipline, each domain has its own data formats, its own data models, and so on. So how to combine them, them without transforming them in, in, in another model, for example. So for example, using linked data uh, approaches or something like that for ensuring this interoperability. And last point, it's more a practical issue, but also very important, um, that digital twin um, will hold a lot of data. If you think about a road of uh, 20 kilometers or something like that, we have a really big geo data. And then if you have uh, high frequency sensor data, um, you have also the real time uh, capability or the capacity. And so this is a really challenge for visualization, for analysis and so on and so on. I think this is also a big challenge um, we we have to, to tackle. Okay, this brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Uh, we've got just two questions online, and uh, welcome to the audience before I answer that. Um, uh, first question, uh, David Alvarez asks, do you have an example of the IFC roads output? No, not yet. So, so this is this is just uh, planned. Um, 
what we've done already um, would be um, some, um, let's say, proxy IFC, uh, where we just used uh, different object classes um, because uh, many, let's say, visualizing uh, engines uh, can't yeah, represent IFC road objects yet. Um, so we resorted to this for the first uh, um, step, but it's definitely planned to just switch the different uh, classes out for maybe first of all IFC alignments and then the IFC road um, entities. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think Pri uh, asks, what what is the level of automation to produce the robot? Is it still need? Does it still need maintenance? Yeah, so so um, right now we um, are working from two different directions. Um, this uh, synthetic uh, data generation scheme would already represent the um, automatic modeling capabilities, theoretically, of course. So um, the models generated um, with or with those workflows um, are um, well. Uh, are based on geometric uh, parameters like center line, uh, number of uh, driving lanes, uh, individual driving lane widths, side slopes, and so on, tree positions. Um, if that data is extractable from the point cloud data, we could automatically do this right away. But of course, um, from the semantic segmentation um, as said, um, we will involve some errors. And uh, there, of course, we have to um, develop something which um, make makes the whole thing, let's say, um, at least fail-proof, right? So there won't be a tree right on a highway, for example. But then might might occur if our model is not good enough. So we really have to focus on um, getting our semantic segmentation model um, as good as possible and at least um, locating the errors, which is uh, yeah taken account uh, to by um, the uncertainty estimation. Um, but, well, ideally, of course, you would um, just give the whole model into the workflow and at the end, we get a digital um, representation as uh, visualized there. That would be the goal. Thank you. Can I just a question? Um, I see your classes for the real surface are quite elaborated. Yeah. Um, are you working for Extending, for example, GML or somehow make something in between the IFC and the GML standards? Yeah, so this is this is actually um, what we are thinking or what I'm thinking about right now. So many of those or most of those classes um, are already um, based on the different standards, right? So we looked at uh, CTGML 3.0 transportation um, complex and used the classes that are present there but try to also introduce uh, other classes from, for example, IFC Road or VSIM, OpenDrive, Oxtra, which is the, the German um, object catalog for, for roads. Um, but of course, uh, it should be extendable, right? So we aren't, uh, we can't be sure that this is really everything there is, or it would be just, uh, let's say, um, short-sighted to think like this. Um, so it should be, of, of course, uh, extendable and, well, Mapping it to uh, to CTGML, for example, would be like um, trying to get a subset of the of the classes from from our meta model into a CTGML yeah. and being able to represent it for sure. Yeah. Thank you very much.